welcome back to the third installment of our budgeting series on Marnie and Michael Mondays. We are not going to stop making budget related videos, but we are going to take a short hiatus after this one, talk about some more fun things. We're going to lighten it up a little bit. A little bit, <laughs> but we want to kind of encapsulate this last segment and uh, hit something that was the most frequently asked mm -hmm. question, which was, okay, great. We know what our expenses are and we have our three buckets laid out. Yeah. Now, how do we put stuff in the buckets? Where do we, how do we determine how much each bucket and all that? Yeah. Now, Michael ended last week's video talking about a little bit about net and gross. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a good place for us to start. Yeah. Touch very briefly on maybe retirement and college. No, not too much of that. That's hard. To That's talk a whole about. separate video, but it does need to be it, mentioned. Right? Yeah. And then we'll talk about yeah. how we fill up our buckets. I think that's a good point. So we're talking about three buckets, our three bucket budget. And yeah, um, you come up with a an amount that you use to populate those three buckets. That's what that's the starting point. And for us, what we've done is we've said, look, there are a couple of non-negotiables. Some things are absolutely set aside before you start populating buckets. Yeah. And we got a lot of questions about that, it looks like, from the comments. And uh, two essential things that get for set us. aside immediately for us are retirement strategy. That money gets set aside immediately. And then the second thing, because we have kids and they haven't gone through school yet, is college, college. saving strategy. So those are kind of two amounts that get set aside before we even get into the Different three Different bucket buckets. all together. And uh, it's going to change for everybody. You know, when you want to retire, how much money you want to have when you retire, uh, what your situation is with kids in terms of how much the parents are going to spend uh -huh. for their college, yeah. you know, and that's a parenting issue as much as a financial issue. And so, mm -hmm. um, this, when I say net, the amount that you come up with at the end to populate the three buckets, it's net of after those things. Right, your salary, take away your withholding for taxes, obviously, which uh, you have to pay. I know. And then the two <laughs> key for us would be set aside for an amount to populate the retirement saving strategy and the uh, college saving strategy. And, and then we, you come yeah. up with your number. Okay, and we'll talk about strategies for those two things yeah. in another video exactly. sometime in September. Okay, so now we have our lump. We've got our amount. That's our net amount, right? And, and that amount. And we like the net I'm sorry, I'm asking a lot of sure. questions, okay. but I just want to be clear. Yeah. Are we talking about your monthly take-home pay, your bi-weekly? How are you figuring we do it out? It, we do it on a monthly basis. Okay. Uh, some people can kind of break it down. Even if you get paid twice a month or you have a bi-weekly paycheck, to me it's better and more easier just to organize by looking at things on a monthly basis. So if you get paid twice a month, add it together for two. So you come up with that net amount, and now you got to populate your three buckets, and the question is, well, what do you do? How? Do you put you know, 30%, 33%, 33%, 33%, and it's all equal. For us, it, it didn't no. work out that way. For us, the I'd way like it's it worked that way. out. It'd be a larger shop. It would, it would be a lot in cash, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the reality, not surprisingly, and we're pretty conservative in the way that we run our lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and so for us, the way it's worked out is most of the money that we have set aside out of that net dollar amount is put into our MQA obligations. And when you say most percentage? Yeah, for us, it works out. Uh, and it's been pretty steady over the last decade. About 60% of our net is put into the MQA line items. Okay. And then 20%, almost even, almost to a dollar amount. 20% is cash, and then 20% is gas, groceries, hair, and nails. Okay, and I have and to so highlight again. 60, 20, 20. After you've already taken out for taxes. Right, this is your net amount. Retirement, yep. college, right. probably savings. Where do savings go yeah. on that? Well, that, that's your retirement, and that's your college. And so, if you need a line item for wow. savings, which like we have, fund? Yep, oh, we, we have put that, that line item in our MQA. We have that. Remember, we I think have we forgot to mention that in our MQA. We have that in our MQA. Savings is a line item. Emergency savings is going to be a factor of people's lifestyles and things right. like that. We're going off your. Yeah, note. we're going off on a tangent. Right. We don't want to get too far afield. But for us, the buckets have worked out. We're at 60, 20, 20, and that's okay. a nice even split. Um, within a lot of people would have questions about, but what about that MQA where you're talking about? paying for a lease on an apartment that you rent oh, or a house, house you rent, payment. or if you're paying on a mortgage, you may have to pay principal and interest on right. a mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. uh, we know you have to pay property taxes if you own a house, you have to pay homeowner's insurance. Those are all considered, you know, within the financial services world, those are considered housing debt. And when you're applying for a mortgage loan, at least in America, underwriters for banks look very closely at percentages based on you know, what amount of your income, usually if they look at the gross income, believe it or not, not the net don't income. Don't listen to that. We don't do that. We look at the net income and, uh, and then they look at, you know, basically what is your housing debt? 
and your housing debt if you own a home is, is, is considered your principal and interest payment on a mortgage, your property tax obligation, your homeowner's insurance obligation, and your association dues that you have to pay. If you have. Otherwise known as P-I-T-I-A. P-I-T-I-A, principal interest taxes, insurance, and association dues. We've become sensitive to our own situation over the years, and it's, it's made me realize that you have to look at debt and obligations in, in certain way ways. The banks because banks um, The banks obviously have a lot of interest in doing various things, and I don't want to get too far afield on no. this thing, but the bottom line is there's a component of your MQA bucket that is going to be relegated simply to housing, housing. debt. It's housing That's obligations. That's probably the largest chunk. If you rent a house, it could be your rent that you pay to the landlord. You have to pay renter's insurance, or you have to pay association dues if you're in an apartment or a, or a condo association. Yeah. Those are the kinds of line items that you want to just consider because within your 60% MQA bucket that we talked about, 60-20-20, okay. 60% is MQA. Of that 60%, I like to see no more than 30% of that be housing debt. And that includes so not just the payment on the house or at least on the apartment, right but here. the utility. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. It includes the taxes. Tax, property taxes. And insurance, homeowner, right? Insurance. P I T I A if you're a homeowner. Got it. I'm going to put um, this in a blog post because I'm going to forget this. Rent, renter's insurance, and association dues if you're if you're just a tenant in an apartment or in a house right. or a condo. Renter, yeah. Exactly. So and interesting. You got that. You so you got 60% go to the bank MQA. And they tell you you that's can really cool. a lot more. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it's a business. Listen, it's a business. Not their, it's not their life that they have to charge. No, they're manage. not your parents. Uh, although they want to avoid defaults and doing foreclosures, they want the loans to perform and they everybody do. to do well. The reality is they probably don't want it as badly as we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want this house. We a want more invested, equity. literally. Yeah. yeah, we want to own this thing ultimately. And so um, at any point in time, you, you never fully escape housing debt. I mean, no, even if you own your house, house, you're still going to have to pay insurance, insurance on it. And you're still taxes. at all points going to have to pay property taxes. And that's why I said... So within that MQA obligation, a pretty healthy chunk of it, even as a homeowner, uh, free and clear, without any obligation, is still going to be okay. a debt associated with your house. That's interesting. In America, it's probably that way. I can't necessarily speak to yeah, I don't people know how outside, of, outside, of, outside of the world, but I'm sure something analogous is, is, a, is a, at issue. Okay, so 60% so in the sixty percent in the MQA. And of that 60 no more than 30% related 30 to housing of that, Right, 30% costs. of that 60 is to the is what I consider housing debt. P-I-T-I-A, okay. if you're a homeowner. Sounds like a party. Rent, uh, homeowner, renter's insurance, and association dues if you're a tenant. That's okay. the way I would describe it. Got it. Okay. And uh, and then so you've come up with basically, if you're not at 60, 20, 20. Right, and that's you're my really, next question. you're really heavy, like let's say you're, oh my gosh, I'm out of pocket cash every month on what are pretty much non-essential items when you think about it we've bucketed it in such a way where your cash is probably not, not the most the essential items you could cut cash you could also look at your mqa line items and you're like you know i'm paying 500 dollars a month to be at this health club or to be or i'm paying a thousand dollars a month to drive this vehicle which maybe you'd... you could look at certain yeah. line items and say you know I'm really overspending on some of yeah. these line items and I sure they need to be line items, but they don't have to be at that dollar amount. I could have a different health club membership or I could drive a slightly different type of vehicle. Yeah. You can go from a, like a small cut, cut back on Starbucks sure. the, or you, you can go all the way to, you know what, we're selling a house or we're MQS. getting something that's more affordable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I did get a question, a few questions on how do we, you know, achieve the lifestyle that we're living now. And a lot of it is, you know, we've been very lucky and you've worked really hard, but no matter what our income level has been, we have always lived, yeah, not just within our means, but below our yeah. means. And we got made fun of a lot well, we, we, by we, our friends uh, over the years. We stayed in an apartment probably longer than so. We did stay in an apartment for We a also long time. hung on to certain Honda cars that we've had a little longer than we probably historically would have, you know, relative to mm -hmm. some of our peers or friends, I would say. But the bottom line is... What I like about the 60-20-20 and the 30% of the 60 that we talked for about, housing. for me, it's a really easy thing to remember. Uh, it's not that complicated. I know people are like, oh, this is really complicated. I guess it's Actually, it's not complicated. After you do it for a month or two, it's super easy. It's a three-bucket budget, 60-20-20, of the 60, no more than 30, and hopefully a whole lot less as you get older yeah. and you start to earn equity in your house. You know, if you right. get to a point where you're a homeowner. You want to start earning equity and that dollar amount becomes less and less. And so you get to a point where the only thing you can't escape are your property taxes yeah. and your homeowner's insurance. Right. But 
but it's right there for you. And if you're not at those ratios, and if we you know, obviously we've not always been at those ratios, yeah. but that's always been kind of an objective to try to get to. And like you said, Marnie, it's not about where you are 25 or 20 years into your marriage. This kind of strategy applied equally to when we were oh, on day one. I would say even marriage. more importantly back then, because yeah. it set us up for where we are now. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. But at the same time, it's never too late. Never too late. Obviously, it's never too late. Yeah, you're right in the right in the sweet spot of being able to get there. Yeah. We yeah. are going to take a break from the budgeting. Um, yes. A few more topics to talk about. I think a little more in depth on retirement and saving for big ticket items. But then, yeah. and, and college, things like that. Um, but I know a lot of you had a lot of questions. So not maybe in this video, but I am going to put something up both here and on all my social media outlets. Um, Ask Michael or some cute hashtag that I haven't come up with yet. <laughs> and we will try to tackle as many of your questions as we can in an upcoming video because we oh, want this good. to work for you. We already know it works for us. We want to make this helpful for you and answer the questions that you have. So keep those in mind. Jot them down. I know you're going to ask them in the comments. I'll start mm -hmm. writing them down. Um, I know we threw a lot of information out there at you, a lot of numbers, a lot of percentages. I will write a blog post. Mm -hmm. I, it will be written by the time you're seeing this. And so check in the description box for that. And um, I'll have something in, in, in written form for you to, yeah. and for me. I kind of want to uh -huh. get my head around this. I've never I know, really thought about the numbers. The numbers can like get a little presented. overwhelming if you're kind of like intimidated by numbers. But, you know, it's not algebra and it's not calculus. It's just, <sighs> it's just a few percentages that you can pretty easily figure out. You know, just no making, matter what your income is. making notes, yeah, over yeah. the course of an evening, you just sit down and kind of go through it and you can figure it out. And those. if you're not at those objectives, at those percentages yet, you know, there are ways that you can get there. Just remembering that, you know, MQA is a more difficult thing to cut. If you're, if you're looking now critically at things to cut, I would advise taking a look at the cash, taking a look at the gas, grocery, hair and nails, buckets as kind of being the first order of cutting a little bit. You're going to find there's a lot of fluff in your own lives. And yeah, otherwise we yeah, always yeah, find always fluff. that where there's a little bit of fluff built in. And that's okay, honestly, because you want to have fun and you want to do fun things and, you know, go to nice meals once in a while and go on fun but vacations. Within, you know, everything in moderation everything is in sort moderation. of the key exactly. to, to everything. Yeah. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this. We've had a lot of fun making this. This has been great. And, um... I'm so, I love doing this with you. I love you and this I love so doing fun. it with you. Yeah, it's great. All right, wait, I, I don't know. The camera's on. Okay, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this series with us. Keep watching. I'm not sure what we're going to be up to next Monday, but I promise it'll be something interesting and hopefully fun. Maybe a little golf. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And uh, let us know what you want to see next. This is for you. So suggestions in the comments below. What yeah. do you want to see us talk about or do in, the, in next week's video and upcoming videos? Till then, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys Wednesday with my regular scheduled stuff, and he'll be back with us on Monday. Great. Thanks so much for watching. Forward to seeing y'all. Thanks. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to July Favorites. I love favorites videos. I love watching them and I like making them, so I hope you enjoy this one too.